Hi, I'm here with uh, Jeremy Zimmerman. Jeremy, can you tell me a little bit about uh, yourself? Yes. Hi, I'm, I'm Jeremy. I come from the internet. Um, I'm born and raised in Paris, in France, and I'm after a few years of being um, a free software activist, I founded a citizen organization called uh, La Quadrature du Net. We defend fundamental rights online uh, on issues going from um, advocating for copyright reform to net neutrality to censorship online to surveillance, data protection, free spectrum and the such. And uh, how did you learn how to uh, work with computers? I mean, did you learn how <laughs> to do programming or write code? Well, I, my... my oldest uh, hacker memory comes from uh, having um, been um, gifted with a, a tiny Nintendo Game & Watch uh, game machine from 1981, I think. I was two or three at the time. When you press buttons, you could see Mickey Mouse, the copyrighted Mickey Mouse, move its arms and try to catch eggs. It's the first thing I think Nintendo did after uh, playing cards. And I was fascinating. That's I really remember being fascinated by uh, how, what was the relationship between pushing the buttons, you know, and having the arms move. This was mind blowing. Then later on, and I think that's my second oldest hacker memory. I had this uh, Sony Walkman, very fashionable in the the eighties, and I I opened it up because I wanted to to see how it worked inside. I wanted to understand. So I took a screwdriver and massacred the poor thing and was indeed never able to put it back in. So I think that this together is its what the hacker does, well, with a little bit more skill. And try to understand how things work from the inside. Then I saw this Amstrad computer to a friend of mine and once again it's the it's more the, the video game uh, aspect that fascinated me. And then I got to learn how to use how to use it and then a little, little bit of programming but not so much because I I always uh, encounter people who were so much more talented than I was at programming that I thought, bah, when I need programming, I'll ask someone. And then I discovered free software, which is exactly that. When you need some programming, you just ask the world. You ask the internet. And, yeah. <laughs> well, how did you, uh, you get interested in, in doing, I mean, you work on things like the anti-counterfeiting trade agreement and, and uh, uh, laws in France having to do with uh, 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 whether you can use copies of copyright works and things. How did you get involved in that kind of activity? Well, uh, so I didn't expect this to, to get that personal. Uh, I think it's a mix of different things. Uh, first of all, uh, seeing Richard uh, Stallman in Paris in '98 for the first time. We explained the MIT printer, yada yada, and, and I understood that what I thought was a very cool more complex version of MS-DOS on many diskettes was actually a project for a better society and it was a political project. The same year I read the first uh, text by Larry Lessig uh, opposing the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and I understood that those politicians would come on our network doing shit and that there might be a problem and then this is when I, I committed myself in a French uh, free software organization April, in which I became a board member in 2000 and then from stepping stone to stepping stone I ended up uh, doing epic shit in the European Parliament and yeah well founding my uh, organization La Quadrature du Net. Uh, how, how did you meet uh, Philippe Grand? Ah, oh, Philippe. I met Philippe, uh, I think it was in a Linux Expo. So I was probably on the booth of April, this free software organization. It was probably around 2000 or 2001. Well, no, it was, it was while I was writing, ah, uh, just before, just after I was writing my uh, thesis on um, software patents in Europe. And I remember that in my, my thesis I quoted Philippe so much because he did so much of the work on, on software patents. And, uh, and we didn't quite know each other that much. But then when we founded La Quadrature du Net in 2008, and with my colleague Christophe, we were the two main um, people in the thing, we were the two active, and we thought, who else would we like 
to have on board like right from the start. And we looked at each other, Philippe Grand. Yeah, Philippe Grand, <laughs> it was an obvious choice and he accepted right away. He was exactly on the same train of thought. Uh, and you know, uh, 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 Gail, uh, uh -huh. uh, European Parliament. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, David Hammerstein. Of course. Oh, David. <laughs> David was my favorite MEP when he was an MEP. Um, yeah, we're now part of a, of a beautiful network of people all around the world who share the same values. I mean, you may have heard of Pranesh uh, from Bangalore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so many people in each and every country in the world. You have either a handful or, or a pack. Of the, the, the coolest people who who dearly value the sharing of knowledge, the, the free internet, the, the free as in GNU software and the such, and it feels so empowering to be part of this network of people. You know what we're what we are building every day is uh, is some kind of uh, informal transnational distributed network of uh, of people sharing ideas and fighting for them, and uh, I think it's very powerful. I hope it's just the beginning. Well, I, I know we have some food here. We've got to eat pretty soon, so I got to just ask one more uh, question. Could you could you just explain uh, what you think is next for you? Next for for what's 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 the next? What are you going to do in the next year? Oh wow! It's a I trick. mean, to the extent that you want to share it. It's a trick question because depending on when you will publish this, this might be a scoop or tomorrow, not. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh. I will try to. Step away a bit from the operational, the everyday activity and spend more time uh, thinking about the strategy and doing those things on the side channels that I've been doing like graphic design and meeting with people to try to connect communities and causes together. Try to extract myself from the stream of endless press releases and the such and concentrate my activity to the, the board of La Quadrature du Net and maybe travel around Latin America. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to add before I turn off well, the camera? Well, uh, why Latin America, you might ask, is uh, it is the only region in this world that gives me hope on a political uh, level and, uh, and there's so many people there uh, I, I like and so many people I I know I need to, to meet, so yeah, maybe we'll meet there sometime. Thank you, thank you very much.